Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Jordan Spurgeon. Thank you for joining us. Arizona was one of the fastest growing states over the past decade, but its 7.15 million people was not enough to give it a 10th congressional seat. Newly released U.S. Census Bureau data shows Arizona will continue to have only nine congressional seats. It also will be unable to add a 12th presidential electoral vote. Democrat Joe Biden's narrow victory in Arizona made it among a handful of swing states instrumental in determining the presidential contest. Arizona had gained at least one U.S. House seat in every census since 1950. Underway is a new effort to audit presidential election results here in Maricopa County. By subpoena, the state is taking all 2.1 million voted ballots and the machines that counted them and handing them over to Cyber Ninjas, a technology firm run by a man who has shared, quote, unfounded allegations of election fraud. Election professionals say they fear this company and its personnel, as without adhering to traditional standards and practices, it could undermine faith in democracy. Yuma, Arizona is the winter lettuce capital of the United States, where 90% of greens are grown from November to March. COVID-19 has affected this community that depends on farming. Cronkite News reporter Samantha Bird explains how farm workers are dealing with the pandemic. It's 10 a.m. on a Wednesday morning in the fields of Yuma County. Uh, Teresa Rodriguez works harvesting leafy greens in San Luis, but this season is different. When our coworker sneezes, we all turn around. Or if we know they feel sick with a headache, we worry. According to the National Center for Farmworker Health, as of January 31st of this year, 99% of rural counties in the United States reported positive COVID-19 cases and 96 reported one or more deaths. In Yuma County, the Arizona Department of Health Services has confirmed 35,426 cases and 830 deaths as of April 26th. In Summerton, Sonny Rodriguez, the president of the Growers Company, says as of December, his company reported 106 positive cases out of over 1,200 screenings. He mentions that they are working hard to make sure employees are healthy. We, our belief is that when somebody gets on our bus, our job is to take them back home safely because they got to feed their families. Farm work never stops. And for this company, out of 5,000 workers, 99% are Hispanic and they produce lettuce like this. According to a 2013 University of Arizona study, agriculture brings an estimated $2.5 billion a year into the Yuma economy. Yuma County is responsible for growing 90% of all leafy vegetables in the United States from November to March, according to the Yuma County Chamber of Commerce. The Regional Center for Border Health is an agency that works on improving the quality of life for residents along the U.S.-Mexico border, which includes providing COVID-19 testing to the community. We have provided screening for over 97,000 individuals in Yuma County. For Rodriguez, prevention among his employees is a key to fight the spread of the virus. COVID is going to be here to stay. So we as a company said, we're going to have to learn to live with COVID. And this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. So we came up with very strict COVID programs. Farm workers like Erasmo Martinez of Yuma are aware of the problem and are following the safety guidelines. We all use face masks, which is important part of not getting infected. This is something that Teresa Rodriguez is also aware of. We ask them how they feel and we make sure we always isolate the person or that they get rest. In Yuma, Samantha Bird, Cronkite News. Closer to home, there's a new mural here in downtown Phoenix. You can see the work of art on the building directly across the street from the Human Services Campus Administration Building. The artist, J.R. Steiner, said he painted this to, quote, bring a little color and a lot of healing art to people experiencing homelessness on and around the Human Services Campus. The building, which is now vacant, was formerly the men's overflow shelter. Again, you can see it on the north side of Madison Avenue, just west of 12th Avenue. Arizona State men's tennis senior and Scottsdale native Nathan Ponwith is set to move on from college tennis and turn pro after this season. Cronkite News reporter Mason Kern goes in-depth on the impact playing in his hometown has had on him and his family. 
the hometown hero, Nathan Wainwright Pondway. If you were given the chance to play the sport you love in your hometown for the college team you grew up rooting for, would you take it? Let's go, Devils! Nathan Ponwith capitalized on that opportunity in 2018, transferring from Georgia to Arizona State after his sophomore season to finish his college tennis career. It's pretty surreal to me. It's uh, an experience I never thought I would have. And growing up, it's growing up here. I grew up in Scottsdale, always, always a Arizona State Sun Devil fan. Came to the matches when I was a kid. Ponwith is no stranger to success. He was the number one prep recruit in the 2016 class out of Scottsdale Connections Academy and was later named the SEC Freshman of the Year and earned first team all SEC honors in 2017 playing on the Bulldogs top court. And when the Sun Devils program was reinstated following a 10 year layoff, Ponwith's Arizona roots led him back home. It's been everything I expected and more. Ponwith's homecoming has allowed his family to witness his accolades firsthand as he's cemented his Sun Devil legacy in the rafters. It is the most unbelievable experience ever. We dreamed of this as a kid for him to play at ASU. To be here at his home roots where he used to come here and cheer on the team when he was young, it, it, it's, it's a full circle. It's meant the world to watch him play here at ASU because we grew up, you know, dreaming one day to play here ourselves. It's been really special to watch him Come play in the valley. Seeing his family in the stands hasn't been lost on Ponwith either. So that's something that's really been special about me playing here because it's, it's, it's my home and, and it's, it's really amazing. ASU was never an option for Ponwith out of high school since the program was cut in 2008 as a financial casualty of the Great Recession. One, two, three, go! But the school's athletic director, Ray Anderson, and his wife, Buffy, made it their mission to bring it back when they arrived. We're thrilled that he could be part of history because we always thought he'd play at ASU. And then when they dropped the program, it was a heartbreaker, you know, that he could never be a part of the team. It was so fun to watch him in our backyard. Ponwith is a two-time Pac-12 Player of the Week recipient this season and is nationally ranked in singles. With senior day behind him, his attention is now on finishing the year strong before turning pro. My future is tennis, and, and we'll see we'll see where that starts. For now, he'll focus on closing this chapter as a Sun Devil. From the Whiteman Tennis Center in Tempe, Mason Kern, Cronkite News. Ponwith posted a 12-7 dual match singles record this season prior to the Pac-12 tournament as ASU's court won. Here's a look back at some of the top stories from our Borderlands team, from a look at the U.S. Citizenship Act to a new program through the Mexican consulate to help women entrepreneurs. On his first day in office, President Biden signed an executive order that could provide a clear path to citizenship for almost all undocumented immigrants in the United States. Cronkite News reporter Ryan Vlahovic has the details on what the future looks like for immigrants in need. It's called the U.S. Citizenship Act, and it's an executive order from the Biden administration that could be the break that undocumented immigrants have been asking for. But what does the undocumented community here in Phoenix think about it? Does the act represent hope, or has the community lost faith in promises? Erlene de Calderon arrived in Arizona in 2005 in search of the American dream. Now, almost 21 years later, she says she found something else. My heart is so disappointed in democracy and these presidents that I don't believe them. They only manipulate the community, our people, so we give our soul with the votes and everything they do to be re-elected. According to an analysis by the Migration Policy Institute, 11 million undocumented immigrants were living in the country in 2018, with 281,000 in Arizona alone. Calderon is one of them. <laughs> As a mother of four, Calderon says that her family is the most important thing to her and that she loves this country. But even when the new immigration plan seems full of hope, she is still skeptical. It's an easy way to buy our dreams, telling us that they will give us an amnesty and we again will continue to believe them. The bill would give immediate residence status to all immigrants living in the United States prior to 2021 if they meet certain requirements. One of the important requirements is not having a criminal history or a pending criminal investigation. But with any immigration bill, it has a long way to go before it's made a law. 
It's going to be presented to Congress. Congress has to enact it into law, uh, pass it to, to the Senate, and then they will uh, ratify it into law, but it still has to approve. Calderon is aware of that. I see moms, my community, running, getting their Mexican passport, translating their birth certificate. There is confusion because this is not a law yet. The executive order would also allow immigrants to apply to be citizens just in time for the next election. And for Elinda Calderon, only one solution exists to press forward. The world changed and we have to change and we have to be prepared for whatever is coming. The last time that an immigration reform passed was in 1986 when Ronald Reagan signed the law providing amnesty to three million undocumented people. Biden's U.S. Citizenship Act was already sent to Congress. In the Broadcast Center, Ryan Vlahovich, Cronkite News. Meanwhile, part of President Biden's immigration plan is a 100-day pause of some deportations. But six days after his proposal, a federal judge blocked the measure. Cronkite News reporter Emma Vendanindi explains the situation at the San Luis and Nogales border, where migrants have high hopes. After President Biden's announcement about his immigration policies, hundreds of migrants flocked to the United States-Mexico border, hoping to enter the United States without fearing deportation. What they found was something completely different. Some migrants at the Mexican border say they feel confused. I thought if I crossed, they wouldn't send me back. And now we are waiting for another chance to cross. Marco Soleros was deported and found shelter at Casa del Migrante in San Luis, Rio, Colorado, Sonora. Martin Salgado, the shelter director, said he witnesses a variety of emotions among migrants. There are desperate people, calm people, and people with hope. In the east, in Nogales, Sonora, Alma Mendoza of Esperanza in La Frontera delivers food and clothes to migrants in need. She recounts one migrant's stress and confusion. She's so sad. She started crying and say, hey, you know, now what's going to happen? After the 100-day memorandum announcement, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton blocked the order with a lawsuit. It was effective January 26. Attorney General Mark Burnovich took a similar stance and sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, stating, we ask you to immediately rescind the memorandum as it applies to pausing the removal of aliens charged or convicted of crimes in Arizona. It is unlawful and will seriously harm the law enforcement efforts and public safety in Arizona. But according to immigration attorney Jonathan Solorzano, deportations still apply to some people. It's not that for 100 days, um, no one is going, you know, after this pause that no one is going to get deported. This uh, ban does not apply to those who have been found a threat to national security, border security, or public safety. Salgado says that after Biden's announcement, he continues to receive about 20 deported people per day at his shelter. All he can do is help. Our mission is to help with their basic needs, of food, shelter for some time, and to try to support them in their American dream. Mendoza also says she will continue helping migrants as much as she can. But there is something clear in her mind. This is a game, like back and forth, back and forth. Uh, we've been waiting this for immigration reform for many years. The 100-day moratorium is blocked until February 23rd. At this moment, the process of deportations at the border continues as usual. Experts say it will continue until the Biden administration takes executive action to overturn the lawsuit. In the Broadcast Center, Emma Vandenindy, Cronkite News. The Mexico General Consul has introduced a new program, helping women of Mexican origin jumpstart their business. I was able to take a look at one photography business that has benefited from the program. Photographer Karina Cordova is a member of a new program that is helping improve her business. We help the families to preserve those memories through beautiful images and videos. The Consular Entrepreneurship Program focuses on helping women of Mexican origin, explains Jorge Mendoza Yescas, Consul of Mexico in Phoenix. We believe that they need the tools to understand the system, like bureaucratic and financial, as well business. 
So, in the end, it could be possible to start a small business. In this sense, entrepreneurship empowers them in this country. According to Jimena Sochez of the Mexican Consulate, they are serving a very important sector of Arizona's economy. Before the pandemic, 120,000 Latino businesses existed here in Arizona. Of those, half are property of Hispanic women. During the program, participants will complete the Dream Builder course, attend virtual conferences with business experts, be part of a mentoring program, and get a list of useful resources for small entrepreneurs. Cordova says the program is making a big difference in her business. For every person that wants to open a business but has no idea how to start, I think it's an excellent opportunity. It's a practical program accessible in Spanish and English. As part of this project, they have a mentorship program with professionals in the business world. The program culminated the last week of February, but they'll start a new one soon. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for Break It Down. That's next. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org.